सुप्रीम लॉर्ड इटर्नल ट्रूथ लेट अस ओबे दी अलोन एंड लिव अकॉर्डिंग टू ट्रूथ नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टुडे द टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन विल बी ऑन योगो एंड पॉलिटिक्स द टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज ऑन योगा एंड पॉलिटिक्स सो दिस योगा एंड पॉलिटिक्स वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट श्री अरबिंदोस ओरिजिनल हिस्ट्री when he was observed in yoga and uh, about his political career something we will focus upon as per described or as per he has written in his own hands as we know sri aurobindo himself expressed mind was the side door entry into the spiritual life mind was the side door entry into the spiritual life because he had a really no intention of entering into the spiritual life performing the yoga and all initially when we can feel we, we have observed some experiences spiritual experiences in his life we have specified a couple of things as before let us take one the gaikwad of baroda when he was writing a short comment on sri aurobindo he spoke the gaikwad wrote when something will be asked to sri aurobindo of course that time sri aurobindo was not sri aurobindo he was only aurobindo ghos so he if something will be asked then the answer will be yes no or at last at least he will stop yes or no or he will stop then the gaikwad concludes there is something yogic in it when the feeling of yoga the flower of yoga yet to be blossomed in sri aurobindo there was no sign of this performance of yoga in his life and career anyway we will discuss something on his yoga and politics of his careers in short in brief we will have to discuss for at that time he did not want to practice yoga already we have discussed he did not have the idea even enter into the yogic life in spiritual life when a friend seeing his natural bent asked him to do so it was advised by a friend to do so because it has got a great energy tremendous power in you that is known as yogic power he said is when he was advised by a friend to do so his advice was like this ye yoga which requires me to give up the world is not for me i have to liberate my country already we know about his madness he so he already spoke that demons are sitting upon my mother's chest and drinking the water drinking drinking the hot blood of my mother that time imagine being imagine what a true child of the mother will do shall he enjoy in taking food and enjoying life or he has to liberate it that was his madness he has already expressed in his explanation now itself sri aurobindo speaks of a yoga which requires me to give up the world to give up the world because initial the thing was there in yoga the practice was there he who would live in the spirit must give up life he who would live the world must give up the self because there was the intention of the initial point of the yoga to live in the world to renounce is to renounce the yogic practice if one someone is to, has to renounce find the self he has to renounce the self this was the usual practice in the yogic period till that time first year sir bindor had to spoke up frankly it is a yoga which requires me to give up the world is not for me it is not suitable for me others may attend it others may perform it others may follow it i have to liberate my country he was a patriot a country lover then he felt a solitary salvation living the world of uh, to its fate a solitary level uh, um, uh, salvation living the world to its fate was not the right thing for him he is thinking of something else his vision was something else his persuasion was something else his concept is something else it was the time of the country time of country past my country 
during the time when it was under the bondage of the british rule he so stir in the felt being educated being grown up being well educated inside the staying being well stayed inside the surroundings of this british people who were deliberately exploiting india by ruling india for hundreds of years he said it was the time to uh, the country fast he said later it country fast but then something happened which showed him that yoga gives power he felt initially it was the idea not to give up the life not to give up the country country fast he has to liberate it after some time he had he showed something was shown that yoga gives the power and he wanted the power to liberate india so he wanted to gain the power and to with this power this spiritual power he wanted to liberate india it is a strange story not unusual in india it was a strange it is a strange story barin all of course one examples here in the gives barin his brother had caught a violent and a clinging hill fever they are when he was staying staying and they were actually fighting the for the indian freedom movement he got a Barin caught a violent and clinging hill fever. He was being treated, but fever could not go. That time, that fever would not go. It was severe fever. What has to be done? Just then, a naga sannyasi, because it is, it was the initial practice in the history of India. These people they were performing yoga, jantra, mantra, or something like this to live, to heal the people, to cure people. Happened to come wandering by. All at a sudden, this naga sannyasi came. He took a glass full of water, caught it crosswise with his knife, while chanting a mantra. A glass full of water, caught it crosswise with a knife, then chanting the mantra, then asked the barin to drink. And almost in a moment, the fever left. It was a miracle, great miracle. And all at it happened all at a sudden. Maybe it was the divine decision for him to for that belief to take place. For to for him, this belief has to come, and for the, with which he has to proceed. That was a destined. It was a expected. Unexpectedly, it came, but it was expected in the history of the uh, his destiny. Sri Aurobind has thus had a direct proof of the power of yoga. He realized that this was the direct proof. This mantras, this chanting, this spiritualism is helping. It has got its power. It is. It is a very delicate. Deliberately, it has got a big power. Sri Aurobind realized it. So when I turned to yoga, Sri Aurobind said much later, and resolved to practice it. So when I turned to yoga, and later much later. And he, when he resolved to practice it, I did it in the in this spirit and with this prayer. This prayer he has written. If thou art very good prayer, nice prayer, he resolved to do so because he is when he turned to yoga and resolved to practice the yoga. This prayer spontaneously came to his mind. If thou art and thou knowest my heart, beautiful. Beautiful description. If thou art, then thou knowest my heart. Thou knowest that I do not ask for mukti. I do not ask for anything which others ask for. Just imagine the difference between Sri Aurobindo and others. Just his ideology and others' ideology. Just his thinking and other life thinking. Just his purpose and his others' purpose. Just imagine this is the great distinctive line in this poem. In this prayer, it is clearly written. If thou art, then thou knowest my heart. If thou art really exist really, thou knowest my heart. And thou knowest that I don't ask for mukti. Mukti is not required by my for me. I don't want to ask mukti. I don't ask anything which others ask for. People ask many things for their for their their own purpose. But I don't ask anything for which others ask for. I ask only the strength to uplift this nation. The thing I need, I to think I ask for you, not the liberation of me, personal liberation, liberation. I only ask the for strength to uplift the nation. I was only ask, I ask only to be allowed to work for these people of that when I love. So personal liberation was not the not in his agenda. He did not like to be liberated. That mukti he was not in favor. So whatever he asked for strength to uplift the nation. Now initially, second thing, um, he should be he asked to be liberated to allow to work for the people whom I love. The it indicates 
that he loved the countrymen, the people who were struggling badly, who were downtrodden, who were oppressed. For them, he wanted to get strength so that he can help them in their upliftment and for their liberation. Therefore, he did not did start yoga. Yoga. Then he beginning he began to start yoga. But there was no conflict or wavering between yoga and politics. Everything was simultaneously going on. That side by side, there was no conflict. He carried out on both without any opposition between them. Simultaneously and smoothly, both these things were going on. Then he or she or in the speaks of Sanatana Dharma, that is nationalism. Sanatana Dharma, that is nationalism, but now the religion sat on a blood stained throne. The religion that is not eternal, universal, can't be eternal. Religion has helped mankind, but actually it is standing on the way as a bar. There is strife, there is classes, there, are, there is class, there are struggle, there are strife. People are, this religion now, they are waging on the seat of a waged war on a blood stained throne. Then something we have to mention about the Bhavani Mandir. Sri Aurobindo speaks of during the Bengal partition of this small revolutionary booklet Bhavani Mandir was circulated throughout the country. It was of course written by Sri Aurobindo. Patriots, lovers of the motherland must have spiritual strength. He speaks of this with this experience. Patriots, lovers of mother, <laughs> motherland must have spiritual strength, he said. To prepare them, a plan was worked out in some detail. A temple has to be built and consecrated. A temple has to be built and consecrated to the mother of strength, mother of India, that temple, what is initially known as Bhavani Mandir. Steeped in calm and energy, here we are, we are to be trained a new order of karma yogins. That was the purpose behind this. A new temple must be consecrated. It must, it must be built and consecrated to the mother of strength, the mother of India, mother of India. A new order of the Karma Yogins, men who are who have renounced all in order to work for the mother, for them, for the freedom of India. This should be helped by others over the country who could sacrifice something for the motherland. The purpose is sacrifice. And what is our mother, mother country? It is not a piece of earth. Already we have seen, seen. It is not a piece of earth. It is mighty Shakti. The Shakti we call India, Bhavani Bharati, is uh, the living unity of the Shaktis of three. 300 million years here in the speaks of the energy of God is within us very much clearly speaks of the energy of God speaks in, is within us it is to India that is has reserved the highest and the most splendid destiny the most essential to the future of the human race India it has the control the Indian spiritual energy is the source of all our strength this energy not ordinary hydel or power plant or solar energy spiritual energy is the source of all our strength there is the fathomless fountain heads and the deep and inexhaustible sources the infinite energy is the mother of the universe the mother of the worlds then she says her you are you who are my children of the sacred land, Ayabhumi, made of her clay, reared with, with, by her sun and winds, I am Bhavani Bharati. Beautiful things. For who you, who are my children of the sacred land, Ayabhumi, made of her clay and reared by my sun and winds, I am Bhavani Bharati, Mother India. I was, it was the call of motherland, all who were young and high-spirited, all to all her children to worship and serve with, with knowledge. This was the call to come, to serve, to worship to, with her knowledge. In a complete self-giving, the condition is sacrifice, self-giving. With the strength gathered from the spiritual living and enlightenment, the spirit will come, the health, uh, energy will come from the spiritual living and spiritual enlightenment. Thousand, the, what was the result? Thousands of ins and youths answered the call. Today also the same call stands, the same call comes. It was the same call given by, given by Sri Aurobindo from his booklet Bhavani Bhar Mandira. It was there, Bhavani Mandira was built and the call was there to liberate the country. Thank you. Bande Matram.